Hello, and welcome to day two of digital learning. Today, we're going to continue looking at quadratics by solving uh, them with factoring. Uh, so this is section 16.2 from your book. And this whole, the whole previous unit that we had, all that stuff about being able to foil and factor, this is why we use it. It's a tool in our tool belt to help uh, manipulate quadratic equations so that we can solve them. So that, that's why we did all that work beforehand to lead up to this right now. Now, we have to understand is there's a huge, huge core idea here. Uh, and keep in mind, what we're, we're focusing on is that second half of algebra where x minus 1 equals 0. Like that, That's really what the second half of algebra it boils down to. And our core idea is this one right here. a times b equals 0 only if either a equals 0 or b equals 0. That is clutch. That is huge for solving quadratics. If we have two things being multiplied together, equaling zero, one of them has to be zero. And so let's borrow that example from up here. x squared minus 1 is equal to zero. This is a difference of squares. We can factor this as x plus 1 times x minus 1. That equals zero. And so, uh, what we've now done is we took this expression right here, which is a difference, something minus something else, and we turned it into a multiplication problem. And so, you can think of this part as being A, this part being B. And so, what, th what we're going to do is break this into two separate mini-equations. We're going to take this x plus 1 and we'll set it equal to 0. And then we'll take the x minus 1 and set that equal to 0 as well. And so when we solve it, we get our two solutions that we saw yesterday, x equals negative 1 or x equals positive 1. And the, all this happens because of this core idea here. a times b equals 0 only if a equals 0 or b equals 0. And so what we're going to do is turn these kinds of expressions into multiplication problems. So that way we can use that property. Now, long term, what this does for us is it will help us when we talk about graphing these things. Because graphing these things tend to look like other parabolas. And one thing that helps us put some points on there is if we know what these are. And so what these solutions represent are the zeros. Now, I just drew a hypothetical one here, so this doesn't match, you know, those numbers, but what it does is it helps us figure out where those zeros are, and so that gives us some points, and then later we'll talk about how to find a point right there, and before you know it, we have enough points to connect the whole parabola together, so that, that's a future problem. Today, we're just going to focus on this part, being able to find these, being able to solve, and so let's run through some examples and see what we get. So here's the first one I have for you. Um, x squared plus 8x equals 0. Now, there's two types of problems that we're probably going to run into. There's that tri the classic trinomial method where we do the two sets of parentheses like this. Or there's going to be the GCF. And we'll see difference of squares, but that really is the same thing as that right there. This one is a GCF. Both of these terms have a common factor. And we can't figure out what it is or what x has to be to make this 0 because of this plus sign. But we factor out that GCF, which happens to be x. We're now looking at x times the quantity, x plus 8 equals 0. What we'll do is break this. So we now have an a times b equals 0. We're going to break these off into two little equations. First one, x equals 0. That's easy. Don't have to do any more work. Second one, have to do a little more work. x plus 8. 8 equals 0, x equals negative 8. Those are our two solutions to this uh, equation. Again, we're taking an addition, a sum, turning it into a multiplication problem, take the factors, and set them equal to 0. Let's look at another example. Now we have a trinomial. This is one where we're going to do this thing. 
okay? Because again, this is a long, or a relatively long expression, and there's all kinds of things we could plug into x that would then make it equal negative 18, and then we add it to a positive 18, we'll get zero. Who knows? Much easier to do it like this. Put our two x's, look at our factors of 18 that somehow can combine to make 11. I'm thinking nine and two, given the negative sign right here, make it minus nine, minus two. Set that equal to zero, and now take each factor, which represents a times b equals zero, and make two separate equations. x minus nine equals zero, x minus two equals zero. So x equals nine, x equals two. You can box it, walk away, because we are done. So here's our final example. Now take a moment and look at this, maybe even pause the video and think, how is this one different than the other ones we've done? So the difference is that we have a number over here. Now the property is a times b equals zero, not a times b equals negative 21. So something that we have to make sure we do is set it equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, it doesn't work. For example, think about a times b equals 48. How many different combinations are there for a and b that could be 48? A ton. But a times b equals zero? One of those has to be zero. End of story. So back to the problem at hand. We'll take this 21 and we'll bump it over here by adding it to both sides. So plus 21. So we're looking at x squared plus 10x plus 21 equals zero. Now, when you've run across this, one sec, that's a very sloppy plus 21. When you run across this, you gotta know that you're gonna be making a trinomial. So when you add whatever over, add something over to the other side, it's gonna set it up for a trinomial. So break it down into its factors. We got x and x. And then looking at 21, got a couple of options. We've got 21 and 1, got 7 and 3. 7 and 3 happen to combine to make 10. Everything's positive, so plus 7, plus 3. Now we do the whole thing where we have A and B, make two separate equations. So we have x plus 7 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 7, x equals negative three. So to recap all of this, it goes back to our core idea. A times B equals zero only if A or B equals zero. We are going to take a problem that is an expression, like this one, which was a difference, or this one, which was a bunch of addition, and turn it into a multiplication problem. Then you solve for each factor, or set each factor equal to zero and solve for it. So your homework should look very similar to this. Uh, I simplified it just to kind of get to the meat of what we're talking about because we're doing all these digital learning days. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email and ask. Good luck.